thank you for joining me for this tutorial. There may be times when you can't find the exact ingredient you need in the program's database, which means you will have to add it to the database. This tutorial is going to go over how to do that. Ingredient data can come from a variety of sources, but the most common is from a supplier spec sheet or from a nutrition facts panel. With your program open, make sure you have the home ribbon on screen. Go to new and choose ingredient. You must have a name for your ingredient and a quantity and measurement entered before the program will allow you to continue. You can also add a common name, which would be a simplified version of this name, product and supplier information here. I'm going to call this new ingredient sample and enter 100 grams as my quantity because this is the most commonly used quantity and measurement for most spec sheets. Now on the nutrient screen, I will enter any nutrient data I have for this ingredient. At the very least, you want to enter your proximates, the calories, fats, carbohydrates, and protein, which I'm entering right now. 109 calories, one gram fat, 15 gram carbs, and two grams of protein. Notice that when I enter the amount, the percent DV is automatically calculated. And this is true the other way around. If I enter a percent DV, it will automatically calculate the amount. Of course, the more nutrient data you enter, the more accurate the analysis will be of anything you use this in. The check data feature is important when entering nutrient data because it could indicate that something is off, which is what the red is showing here. Maybe my values aren't adding up or there might be missing values. We recommend that you review your data when this happens, but in the interest of time, I won't be doing so today. For more information, we have a tutorial on using check data that can be found at the address on screen. Also, the nutrients that you see on this screen are those that are selected in the nutrients to view dialog but you can also check this box to show all of the nutrient fields in the program. That's the basics. I'm only going to briefly touch on the remainder of the screens here, but you can find tutorials that go into more detail at our learning center. Again, the address is on screen. Yields and measures. This is where I would enter a household measure for this ingredient, like a cup, um, or yields. Cost, this is where I would add costs. Anything entered here will also be used to calculate the cost for whatever recipe you use this ingredient in. Groups, groups are useful for future searches and for organizational purposes. In this example, I'm going to add my ingredient to the vegetable group, and then when I search for this later, if I search only in the vegetable group, it'll be easier to find. Attributes, an attribute is any property of any ingredient that you want to track for whatever reason. Most likely you're going to use attributes to make tracking bioengineered material or other required voluntary declarations easier to track at the recipe level. That would be something like vegan and gluten-free. Notes, I can add notes to my ingredient here and then print these notes with my ingredient report. Ingredient statement, here is where I would add the name of the ingredient as I want it to appear on future ingredient statements. Allergens. The program has to assume that all new ingredients contain all allergens, and here is where you would clear the allergens it doesn't have. So I'm going to clear them all. Attachments. You can attach any type of file to this ingredient, maybe an image or the spec sheet itself, and you have to save the ingredient first to do so. And then when I'm done, I will click OK, go up here and click Save and I will be able to use this ingredient in a recipe like I would any other ingredient. And that's it. Thank you.